Hey, aloha, and welcome to Korean Natural Farming Office Hour for October 2nd, 2022. And uh, I realize you guys got uh, daylight savings and all that going on, but we don't do that here in Hawaii. Um, so, yeah, I think there's daylight savings at least. Maybe. My sister is here. Hey, hey, hey. How's it, everybody? So uh, I want to just start off with some good higher inspiration and ooh yay unlike last time where we had oppression exhaustion this time we got progress and um it's uh fire over the earth which means you progress like the rising sun the brighter your virtue the higher you rise this hexagram announces a time of significant and easy progress. Your influence and understanding grows by leaps and pounds as long as you maintain your alliance with the sage. For it is from that alliance that your current progress springs. The only limit to your growth now is your devotion to higher things. If this is true, complete, and steady, there will be great gains now. The image of the hexagram is that of the sun rising over the earth. To our view, the further it moves away from darkness, the higher the sun rises. The same is true of us. The extent to which we progress is determined by how far we distance ourselves from inferior influences. It's important when success comes not to fall into the traps of the ego, taking credit for gains, resting on laurels, indulging in desires, or plotting towards ambitions. The superior person instead uses the time uses times of progress to brighten his virtue, recognizing it was his commitment to proper principles that brought about success in the first place. Continue to purify your thoughts, attitudes, and conduct now. The greatest power in this beneficial time accrues to those who serve the higher power in every moment. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a good one. Progress. Just had a good, good weekend. My sister got married, oh my gosh, to a great guy from Colorado, and um, they're, they live just outside of Denver, so it was nice nice to see her. I don't always um, see her all the time. Let me just type that in wrong. Hang on. Um... But yeah, it was nice. Went to the beach, hung out, um, had a great time over there. And uh, do, I, do I get any pictures? Maybe I got one picture to show you guys. You know, coming to Hawaii, having a good time, having the whole family come here. We had a farm tour. They checked out our pigs and verified, sure enough, they don't stink. It's amazing, right? Um, let's see if I got a picture. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see it. Nah, it doesn't show up that well. But uh, at the beach, having fun, getting married. Um, let's see, any other picture? Well, I was gonna, and then they had, you know, the obligatory Hawaii sunset picture. You know, getting married at the beach. So it was nice. Um, it was nice to see the landscapes over Kona side, the desert, swim in the ocean. Um, you know, each it's kind of funny. Each time I go over there, I swim in the ocean a little bit, and there's less and less fish each time. Although we did see some manta rays, and those were good. Um, but yeah, always I always think you know it's hard for me to sometimes take time off. Although um, our friend Nula watched the farm here, and all our chickens and all our pigs survived, and farm's great. She really did a great job while we were there. Um, and let me get here. So, um, 
Yeah. Oh man, getting some spam in my email. Let's get rid of this stuff real quick. Okay. Okay, so, um, it's good to see all you guys. Hey, what's, <laughs> um, Stone Mason tuning in, Cheryl from Idaho. We got, um, Mark coming down. I don't know where Mark's at these days, California someplace. Julia from Finland, Ali from Montana. Hey, the goof man in New York. Cicely in Western Australia. Hey, I witnessed. Hopefully, hopefully you survived uh, Hurricane Ian down there. Saw that it was kind of gnarly. So, uh, land of flowers. Hopefully, it's not flowers over grave sites of dead boats from getting taken out by a hurricane. But, yeah. Hey, and George, man, how's it? And she be. And New York. Hey, cool. Yeah, I am indeed in live. Yeah. <laughs> I am indeed thirsty. Forgot my, uh, forgot to bring enough water over there. Not that there's not water, but their water is like all chlorinated and ugh, not that great. Okay, so, um, okay, so, um, cool. So, um, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell's asking a question here in the email. I'm looking, looking at this email, and he was asking about um, the book that Master Cho wrote that I had last time. And, um, you know, you can find that around if you look hard enough, but um, I will figure out some way to get it to the public, I think. Um, you know, I think that's a gem, and uh, Master Cho's old books like that are, are amazing, so... Um, We'll, we'll try and figure that out. Um, let's see here. Yeah, okay. I wanted to start off today a little bit over here. Because um, this actually this came on September 14th, which was like a couple of weeks ago. But um, but let's see. I'm going to transition this over to this one. Get that to go. And this is... Um, Julia sent me this of getting her IMO2 microbes. So, um, and I'll speed it up just a little bit, just because, um, oh, nice squirrels in the trees. So I think this is her collecting the IMOs, because before we watched the one where she set them out there, but I'm pretty sure this is her and her cousin collecting them. And she told me, um, that she, um, oh, cool. Yep. Yep. Nice, nice mycelium there. But her cousin was doing, um, a, I believe it's her cousin. Okay. Yep. Yep. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Not whole. Um, looks, it looks to me like maybe you could have collected them like a little bit earlier, but, um, but still good. Nice collections, nice blueberries. Um, but her cousin was doing, um, an agricultural, um, degree at the university and, um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It looks to, it looks to me like you could have gathered this slightly earlier, but those are going to be great, good, um, good microbes doing their thing. Yeah, when it blooms up like that and it's starting to come down, it looks like you, you um, could have gathered this slightly earlier. Um, but but awesome. I don't, I'm not sure how long the collection was here. <laughs> Eyewitness is talking about his banana plant taking a beating in the <laughs> hurricane. <laughs> cool. Is there is there volume on this? I don't know. I'm not hearing it if there is. Maybe I gotta pump this other volume through this one like that. Oh yeah, okay. This one looks like almost all the best. And that's funny, that one's in cardboard. Got a little bugs in there, no problem. Just mix them with the sugar, they'll be good. And even the my microbes are climbing up to the lid. This this one by far of all that you pull so far, that one looks the best. It's funny that's in cardboard. 
Um, cause sometimes cardboard is getting, you know, it's harder to clean to get out, you know, and I gotta like this, right? Oh yeah. And for some reason, I was subscribed to your channel. I don't know why you might unsubscribe me. Oh, you know why? Cause I'm in this different account, right? I'm in my, um, my foundation account. That's why I'm not subscribed. So look at these, this nice wooded area, all these collections she put out. And this is such a smart idea to put out multiple collections all at the same time. And you can mix them all together, which is, looks like that's what she's going to do. So taking them all. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. Mixing them all. And that, that much more diversity. Getting, getting that, preserving of the sugar to suck out the moisture, keep the microbes happy. Oh, you, you could have filled this thing a little bit more. Um... That's a huge jar. It's a nice jar. Oh, nice. Yep. Good. Nice. Um. Oh, oh, she oh, so she said she checked a few more on day seven, and they seemed like they needed a couple more days. And so when you check them, if you open them, um, it can disturb the airspace. So check them by, like, underneath to see if they're warm. So checking all these out, nice. Yeah, yeah, you know, in that much um, IMOs in there, it's like, it looks really good. Nice, mixing it with the sugar, equal volume. Oh, the Frida. <laughs> oh, it must have been on Friday, you know? <laughs> Something, I, I don't know. I don't speak Finnish, but it seems cool. Beautiful language. Um, okay, and then it automatically suggests this next video to me, but let's check this one out here. She sent me one other video and pause this, hang on. Get this going. Um, she, um, oh, she said she moved it to a smaller jar now. That's all she had that day. Okay, okay. Um, took the ones I checked out. Uh, she had seven collections in total. Um, pink, red, and black are bad sign when making IMO. Yep, that's true. Oh, Frida is your cousin's name. Cool. It's not Friday. <laughs> okay. Frida, that's like a, a strong name though, right? I think. So, uh, so, and then we'll check out her um, IMO3 video here. So this is her again with Frida, I think, right? Yeah. And um, putting the right solutions into the into the watering can there, mixing up the act soil activation solution. And then adding the water to it. Oh, that's seawater probably. Oh, and the right IMOs, nice. The seed IMOs, good, good. Oh, and a different batch, so she's mixing in multiple. That's, yep, and three of them, even better. Get that more diversity in there. Oh, yep, even more, yeah, cool. That's really cool to see. All that diversity going in. Water and can. Cool, cool. Good to use it without the filter on front too. Otherwise I get stuck in there. Cool. Nice. Yeah, they're OHN. Cool. Uh, the food. Cool, cool. Sally, who's that one? Uh, she mixed all the collections. She's done with female friends. Good energy. Yes. Cool. And some hemp flax. Oh, oh, so that's your medium. You're using like hemp herd. That's cool. So with with the hemp herd, I recommend you add like a little bit of starches into it. Oh, that's sugar. Oh no, that's that's more like the mill run. Okay, cool. So if you're gonna mix these two together, that's a really good idea actually. The mill run plus the hemp herd. And this hemp herd is really cool stuff. I got some from Mowgli. He he imports it in Michigan. So if you're up there, uh, check out um, Chavre um, things. So the hemp herd, they mixed it. And then, yep. Oh, so she maybe she added flour to it. And so she got, yeah, and then the mill run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the old wheat flour. Perfect. Perfect. That's a perfect blend because then you're going to get enough carbohydrates into the hemp herd, which is going to act as a great medium for it because you can't do it with just that. Moisting it up. 
Smart, get it all moist. Oh, and then she's using the tarp to turn it. That's even smarter. You, that's amazing. Okay, and then they're going to put in this, their IMO liquid they made before. Getting in all the microbes, getting them mixed in. That was really cool. Yeah. And using the tarp, that's smart, because then it's not going to go down below um, and get all, before they mix it up, get that together. I like the chipmunk noises. I think it's just you guys being sped up. Oh, yep. Now they're mixing that in, getting it good. Cool. And also the tarp keeps the water from running below. So it's a good idea to mix this way. That's cool. Really smart. Dig it. And you turn it all the way over so you don't get anything at the bottom. Wow. Smart, you guys. So it happens, you, you know, bring this technology to Finland and they optimize. <laughs> and they're checking the moisture content, making sure it's moist enough, right? You want 60% in there. Are they satisfied? Oh yeah, look at that. No water leaking out, but then it's staying together. And then they take it off the tarp. Super smart, you guys, because the tarp would have made it ferment kind of weird. And now it's right here. Oh, wow. And making it the correct height so it doesn't overheat too much. Wow. <laughs> oh, it sounds like two mics are turned on. You know, I'll try and fix that. Thanks, thanks for the tips on that, because there are... I think if you can still hear me, I don't know if you guys can still hear me, but I muted the second mic because I don't know. And she said it turned out beautifully, that pilot. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I had two audio sources going and then I wasn't sure if I muted one, if you could still hear me. And Mark wants to crawl in that pile because if you do get in these piles, oh man, it's amazing. Um, oh yeah. Look at that. Mycelia. It's going. Cool. And this is, is that around the pile? Oh, that's, that's maybe around the pile. And I think this is like where she keeps animals too. So it's good to inoculate it that way and keep it together. And then the mycelia, when you grow a pile, it grows out into the outside, you know, and it grows all around. It's going to keep these goats so happy, happy goats. Cool. So awesome, Julia. Thanks. Thanks for sending that in. Both, both videos are good. Um, yeah, it's cool. And, you know, HJS Divine Hands was saying the pink, red, and black are bad when making IMO. As long as it's not predominant in there, um, you know, if, if your collection was entirely that, if there's a tiny bits of it, you're, you're going to be okay. By the time you mix the IMOs in with the sugar, the good microbes are going to outcompete the, the, the bad pathogenic microbes. Um, so, so that's good. Um, and yeah, you guys can still hear me. Okay. I was just double checking because I mess with the sound and then it goes off. Um, cool. Um, if you did an IMO bath, would the microbes be able to withstand being washed from a shower? Um, so, you know, you mentioned the IMO bath and this is something that's, um, that's kind of near and dear to me. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. I'm going to pull one of these up here of, um, shoot, I wanted this tab open. I got so many tabs open. It's like rabbit holes, man. Um, so I just, just for folks that don't know, I'm going to go over and show here. Um, uh, I am bath and show you what, what it is. Um, just, just so that, um, and I'm going to mute this side here. So so this is an IMO bath where people actually get inside. And this is a very giant pile where they get inside. And so Thomas is asking, you know, um, can, can the IMOs uh, resist a shower after? So what happens is if you look at these guys, they're sweating, right? And so what's happening is while you're in the IMO bath, 
um, you know, you come out and all these IMOs are sticking to you. There's Justin, um, was that some Chinese guy that came with us, the Taiwanese guy, D Uncle David Wong. He was in here healing his um, cancer, which I can't say it works or doesn't because I don't think you can make those types of claims without getting arrested. But you see how hot this is? It makes you sweat and it raises your body temperature. And so it kills pathogens because the pathogens can't live at this higher temperature. Um, but look at him sweating. And when you sweat, your pores open up, right? Your sweat glands open up. And the microbes then use that water to actually go into your skin. And so these, so can the microbes withstand the shower? Well, those microbes have actually embedded themselves. These good beneficial soil microbes, these, you know, have made you sweat and then they enter your pores. And so it's like coating yourself in microbial armor because without these, um, you can't, um, you know, you know, like, like most of our microbes are always being washed off by like, um, detergents and, um, you know, soaps and these other things and antimicrobial, you know, hand wash, which was pretty popular a couple of years ago. Um, maybe still popular today. I still see it around places, but people aren't slathering themselves in it like they used to. Um, so if the microbes, you replenish them and you put them on yourself. Now, if a pathogen comes in order for it to penetrate you or get on your body, it has to fight all those beneficial microbes that are chilling there. So, you know, and this is just showing you, I've, sh I've shown this video a couple times, but this is just how it's done, right? So you take your same pile, you know, in, the, in a bigger pile, the better. Um, you know, this is a huge one. He's using this tiller to turn it here because uh, he makes this much for his um, quail farm. They mix it into the feed of the quails. Um, and he, he runs one of the biggest quail hatcheries in Korea. Um, this is uh, Mr. Lee here. And, um, so this is how you do it. You know, you just bury yourself up like this, um, and get, get into the pile and, um, you know, don't obviously don't bury your head, but getting it all the way up to your chest and making sure that you got this pile on top of you. And then you can stand there for, you know, 15 minutes, half hour. Um, and it, it'll create an artificial fever cook out the pathogens and do that um here's here's this um our, our uh, taiwanese friend getting out of there um yeah anti-life hand juice yeah so um so th this is a great way to replenish if you did a bunch of hand sanitizer or you shake hands with someone who did hand sanitizer it's going to kill all your microbes and usually they're using things like um, alcohol or even um, what are, you know different microbes to actually kill it. Um, and so here's just an example of like if you wanted to create an IMO spa and um, get a bunch of people in your region into it, you could build a facility like this, have a little tractor. In fact, this is probably like a big, big expensive tractor with a nice big expensive tiller. But depending on your area, most people have these. Um, you know, if you're going no-till, just tell people, hey, I'll, I'll take your tiller and um, get it. Um, and then, you know, I should speed this one up too. But he's just going to till this. And so it's just cool to see, you know, how he was doing this stuff. Um what they're doing in Korea and th this then replenishes your microbes. You know, he turned, this is how he turns his IMO pile on a, on a super large scale. Um, and then, um, you know, makes it all nice. Does his thing. He'll reverse back, do it a couple times. And, uh, let's see, let's close that transition this back, close that. Um, but also another, um, well, let's see. I actually want to go back here and and then if also if you are um, if you are on a smaller scale and you want to do this, um, I have you know this video is of me. You know, here, here's my micro pile here. Make sure this is sped up. Um, but turning it with a smaller tiller 
in BCS. And this is my power ridger and just using this to turn it. So, you know, if you're, if you're worried about turning an IMO pile, um, you know, this can make it a lot easier on you. Um, I mean, you can turn it by hand and it's actually like a spiritual great experience, but if you're into automation and those types of things, uh, turning it, turning it this way, where this wheel in the front keeps my tiller from going down into the ground, this ridger, and um, making sure that pile is completely turned. It does, it does break up the fungus a bit more, but um, but works pretty good. So, uh, and then I'm always turning it from one place to another. So the pile was there. I'm turning it over to here. And I recommend you do that, not just turn it in the same spot, because this area can heat up and different microbes can cause the bottom of your pile to get hot. So this is just transferring it from one place to another and turning it with a machine, because um, sometimes that's good. So anyway, get back off of that and stacking it up and turning it. Let's see, how long is this thing? It's going to go make it twice the speed. Um, and oh yeah, the, the BCS turning, it's, it's awesome having that, having the right, um, equipment on it having the right thing, you know, knocking my pile down a little bit. And this is, this is actually, I believe this is an IMO four pile. That's why it's browner. Uh, there's dirt mixed in and then cover, cover the pile back up with my, uh, these are banana leaves, but using any, um, tall grass type of like long grass to cover it hay straw you know covering it so yes let's see let's not go to the next video of young sang cho um but yeah using the using the bcs easy way to turn them um so um let's scroll back up a little bit here um brandon was asking so i have jms brewing after last week's advice i also have brown rice sprouting so that i can brew some brown rice vinegar um and that's awesome man that's that's cool man make brown rice vinegar fruit vinegar um and um is there an easy recipe how to make apple vinegar <coughs> You know, you, um, if you have your leftover apples and you, um, you, you mush them up and add water to it, um, they will turn to, um, apple cider vinegar. Um, and B Rainbow Possum Farm is talking about making can of food from it. After you strain the water, the solids are left and you let that sit for three months. And that is actually, that is my recommended recipe because it always works. The vinegar always works out of that. Um, and that is what is in here. Let's go up to it of the vinegar recipe, which is right here. Um, and this is how to make can of cleanser, which is fruit or grain vinegar. And, um, if you make can of food from fruits and add it with two parts of water. So one part in your bottom of your jar is from fruit food. And then the top double two parts is water and you fill your container up two thirds full. So these things fill up to two thirds of this jar here and that and then ferment or put a breathable lid and ferment for three to six months. Um, this will grow a nice mother on top of the jar and you'll get a great vinegar out of it. And this is the most consistent like always works for me recipe other times i'll i'll pile in fruit at the bottom of, up to about half and then fill it with water up you know this to um two-thirds full and ferment that with just fruit without sugar a little bit less expensive and it also will turn to a vinegar you can also take alcohol and leave alcohol out with a breathable lid and it will convert to vinegar that's um so if you made a fruit wine or something and then you take the lid off, it will turn to a vinegar. Um, and the way to know it's vinegar is you test it and it has a pH of less than 2.4. Um, and then, you know, pour that off. So vinegar, easy to make, um, especially after you've made the can of food. Um, And Rainbow Possum Farm says they made a really tasty pear vinegar this way. That's awesome. Pear pear vinegar, um, 
uh, yeah, I've had avocado vinegar, all kinds of interesting things. Um, yeah, so, um, hey, what's up, Imugi? Some Korean word, oh, let's see, I should translate that. Hey, and super chats. Hey, those those are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to it's good to get some uh, flow back in. It's October, starting it off. Um, okay, apple sliced up. Okay, yeah, yeah. So so I did talk about the appropriate proportions. You know where it's about half, and then you fill it with water um, or half fill with water above you know when i'm using uh without the sugar emoji emoji <laughs> emoji emoji yeah oh emoji is a mythical dragon snake awesome that's cool yeah <laughs> oh Okay, so, so yeah, the um, you know, half, half with if you're just using fruit without um, without sugar, half, and then fill it up that much, and then because the water will percolate all down into here, so you're not just getting one third, you're actually probably getting about half this thing of water, because it'll percolate down. Happy anniversary to office hours. It is. It's an anniversary, and um, look at that nice flower back there. My mom always with the flowers. And uh, Master Cho, chilling, KNF, pure KNF logo, Flat Eric, all the all the good people hanging out in the office with me, spiritually and otherwise. Um, Heather Haynes, did I did I get in there? It's is me the weird naked guy in the corner behind you? Oh, um, he's not naked. He has, he has fur on. Um, oh, cool. Well, good, good to fix things up on your own. Always a farmer. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chats. Thank you, Cheryl. Awesome. Let the chat of rain, you know, I appreciate it. It's good. It's good. Um, it enables me to do things and build the farm and make things better. So, um, and, uh, stonemason has a, um has a cucumber vinegar going that's awesome man yeah those those juicy cucumbers make great vinegar add it to your salad have uh you know super super salad with it and or use it for uh everything okay so i think there were a few more um thank you julia they really thank you for for that um and um and so she she said her cousin Frida, who had been working on her course evaluation visit from the teacher from agricultural school, um, and she realized her cousin is now the first person to have learned KNF in ag school in Finland, and she's deeply grateful for this knowledge. The teacher used to be my teacher also, and as a child growing up on a self sufficient homestead, awesome, yeah, you can, uh, that's amazing. Um, we had great fun and she got interested in KNF. I'll be sending her some links and keeping in touch. And so it's great to introduce um, folks that are in these fields because I feel like if you're already in the agricultural field and you learn about these microbes and you're not bought out by some corporation that's that's spent like controlling your research one way or the other, but you're actually like um, open to like these ideas, it's like, whoa, KNF you know, understanding culturing the microbes, understanding how the can of foods have plant exudates, understanding how the vinegars are a natural process that breaks down and has everything, understanding how the herbal tinctures of the can of medicine, all these things fit together. And you look at these formulations that are there. I really think that someone who's academic that doesn't have special interests or like bought out by somebody would really just like love KNF, just like they do the Korean guys, um, uh, Professor um, 
oh okay. man i'm thinking of names when i'm like it's been, you know what the, it's been years i've been just here and i realized i've been you know since 2020 i've been like not going out so i my my mind of the names that i can think of but do juan kim is his name professor professor kim um it just takes me a second to think of these things these days um but um you know he's doing it at um Konkuk University, one of Korea's nice, um, good colleges there. And, um, you know, the academics of learning this stuff, it's, it's very, very amazing and to get these studies, you know. And if you are interested in the studies and the academic part of this stuff, um, which would be a good re re uh, resource for maybe your professor here, is on the Peer KNF Foundation, peerknf.org. Um, up at the top under uh, projects and then research and academic papers here, um, which maybe should be its own tab, but um, there's there's University of Hawaii documents. So if somebody, you know, oftentimes if a professor or something wants to get into it, they don't want to just watch YouTubes or, um, you know, they want to find accredited information. So this is the College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. These are papers um, written by, um, this one was written by Ke, Keili Ikuli, I'm not, and, and um, Kun Hui Wang. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, this is comparison of phosphorus solubilizing and nitrogen fixing bacterias amongst organic and conventional. Um, and then there's papers on how to cultivate all these recipes, right? So if you're looking for the academic way, and um, I'm an author of majority of these pa uh, papers, not not the indigenous microbes, but um, I helped helped a little bit on each of these just to um, get them correct. But I'm an author on these papers here amongst other folks and primarily written by Mike Dupont, though, even though he's listed last here. He was the primary author of these um, and so there's all the solutions here of um, how to go through, um, and then one on the pigs here, and then down here in Kung Kuk University, there's all these um, like talks that we did at the um, International Symposium in 2016. Um, so there's all these different um, experiments that they were doing of around you know developing uh, poultry feed by unha lee um tomato except for that one's in korean right i gotta get these translated but um you know pr uh, potato production um, eggplant tomato um, so these are folks growing for their phds and growing these things um, corn here maize um, and effects of microbes in peanuts and I, I love Zacchaeus. He's such a cool dude. Uh, he's my friend down in, um, I think he's in, from Zimbabwe. But he's he's my great friend down there. Um, the African dudes that um, that came all the way to Korea to learn natural farming. Um, and so there's a bunch of these. There's a bunch. So, and these are the, um, you know, the research of, of what's happened in a more academic setting. So, um so yeah, if you want to, if you were to translate these and put subtitles, I'd put them in there and credit you, and that'd be a great, great service because some of these are are great. And you know, one of it's it's in Korean, and in fact, if you're a good translator, I do have a few more resources for you that could be translated. That would be a great service. Um, there's a um, there's actually um, a book here. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can find this, um, I believe, um, I probably shouldn't look for this live, but hey, let's see here, um, no, it wasn't that one, oh, probably shouldn't do this while you guys are just sitting here watching me go through my computer but um you're not well you're not really watching it but um but let's see here let's see if i can find it real quick here i'll look one more time um
you know what it's called? It's fruit tree book. There we go. Let me see if I can find it. I'm just gonna search here and see. Um, I don't see it. But anyway, I got a I got a bunch of books in Korean. Actually, I got a ton of books in Korean that um were by Master Cho that were his original like really advanced books um that needed to be need to be translated. So if you're interested in that and can do it, that's just great. And um so Mark here is saying um the male flower leaves fermented vinegar is awesome. Just finished a five gallon bucket of it. That's awesome, man. And uh yeah, you guys making it out of the flowers that you can't mention on YouTube. That's cool. <laughs> um cool and um okay yeah the papers saved on your knf files awesome yeah so so saving all those things getting those out there um and okay okay so yeah um okay so um heather is asking a little bit about the knf barn here um let me just see here because if i pull that up there's actually um let's see here i think um there is a drawing of the barn here let's see if i'm here and i go to livestock and i go to pigs let me see um yeah okay so so here um on naturalfarminghawaii.net no uh, natural farming hawaii um talk about odorless pigs so what i did was i went to natural farming hawaii here and then i clicked up here on livestock went to pigs so if you're looking for this um this whole this um talk here if you actually get this and download this um this talk here um it tells you all about this system and how it works. Um, but scrolling down a little bit to the building, this is a not to scale drawing here of the basic idea that, you know, charcoal logs, green waste, this is four feet deep. And then the pigs um, sit on top of that. And then the, this roof is actually uh, eight feet above them. And all that, all those measurements help everything work. Um, so there's not really measurements here realize I you know have these things out but if you are looking for a specific design here is the blueprints of a building um, showing you know with all the takeoff of construction costs of course this was done in like 2008 so you can multiply it by about 20 now if you're gonna build this today um, yeah maybe you can earn money translating these books though that's that'd be a good thing. I'd, I'd give you some money for that. Um, so so this is the plans here going, and then here's you know the housing construction costs, which were forty eight thousand. But you can basically multiply that by at least five today, because um, this was two thousand eight, right? So um, you know a tractor and driver for one acre, acre of land clearing, they probably quote you like five thousand dollars today. Conley greenhouse. There's no way you could get it for fourteen thousand. It's probably thirty-six thousand. You know all these things, these roofing, all these. You know of what it costs them to build this. Uh, if you could go back in time, and even their pigs, twenty pigs at eighty-five dollars each. Pigs today are one hundred fifty each. So um, you know, and then he has optional security. You know, get the camera and equipment and the landscaping, right? But that shows you the basic costs of doing this, and that's off this document here, which is, you know, um, so if you do go naturalfarminghawaii.net, look at that um, if you're interested. And then there's a University of Hawaii guide on how they built this thing and what they did. And here's here's their drawing of a little bit more to scale. Um, you don't necessarily need that sawdust up there, um, but they talk about it that way. Cinder and biochar logs green waste, sawdust, happy pigs, um, and yeah, so 
they're also showing it. This I think this was the Hubble's putting down um, green waste. And I yeah, that's the University of Hawaii one. So um What's up, Tyler? Yeah, bro. Just talking about you this weekend. Um, was good. So, um, so let's see what else. I got a few more other things. Thanks, Julia, for that again. Um, going back to my email, just seeing this here. Um, some guy trying to sell me stuff. Um, it's all good. We all have the right things out there. Um. And then Rainbow Possum Farm. I know you're here, but you asked a question. So the other day I found an advertisement from a local berry farm for mature blueberry bushes for $5 each. You dig. Obviously, I went and grabbed as many as I could. Awesome. Good choice. The farm I was getting them from used chemical farming methods, and I wanted to minimize the amount of poison I was bringing back to my farm and help ease the plant's transition. So I bagged each root ball for the drive home and carefully removed as much of the dirt as I could when I got home. This was also because there was a lot of weed seeds in it, like bindweed. Then I soaked each plant in a bath of some maintenance solution, a little bit of IMO2, um, they haven't made IMO3 or 4 yet, and a, fr a handful of fresh worm castings before planting out. Would you have done anything differently, and would you have any tips on ha helping those plants thrive moving forward? Thank you, Mary. So, um, so that's, that's a great question. This is a great thing, you know, uh, transplanting, moving matured plants. I think what you did where you dug them up, you know, try and get as much of the roots as you can. Um, Master Cho, he always talks about bare rooting transplants. So if your transplant is a little bit older, however, he does mention putting water soluble calcium in there, which is the KNF reproduction. Okay, so it's the one from eggshells and it's that water soluble calcium from reproduction because that helps the plant. They have a higher calcium uptake once they're more mature and it helps them kind of harden themselves up and, and get, um, you know, calcium is a little bit of a metal. So it helps um, to get in there and um, cure any wounds or anything when you're transplanting. And also, if you think about it, older people need more calcium, water-soluble calcium. KNF reproduction is a great way to get this stuff. And um, so, um, yeah, so that's that's my advice on there is when you are transplanting older mature plants to add, in addition to the maintenance, a little bit of um, water-soluble calcium to it. And... Um, the IMOs in there, awesome, really good idea. Um, and he he bare roots, um, you know, transplants. So don't worry too much about that. When you soak them in there, um, the soak rate is about, um, you know, it depends on the size of the berry bushes, but anywhere from about 15 minutes, half hour to maybe two hours of soaking, um, depending on, on what you're going to do, depending on how thirsty they were and that extra stress. Um, and then next thing after you got them transplanted, now that they're in the ground, is um, go around the, the bushes and put um, a thing of IMO. It's about, you know, six inches to a foot wide of IMO as a ring around where you planted your berry bushes. And then um, you can mulch that with a little bit of um, wood chips or, or um, straw mulch. And then, in, and then inoculate around that circle and do that for the next um, uh, couple couple of weeks of, you just put the microbes down once, but water in the soil solution around your, your new um, blueberries. And that'll help those roots to reach out and tie into that network. So it, it, as you're transplanting something into a new area, getting those IMOs in a donut shape around just just around the perimeter like the drip line and then watering that in and that enables your roots to be like hey i'm here i'm in this new area i want to reach out i want to get into this area because you really want to encourage your horizontal um lateral roots 
Those are what brings bring in the most nutrition for the plant and reach out and grab everything that you that you're looking for. So the the you know the more the um, the mature plant can reach out and rebuild its roots, the better. Um, and yeah, so and and then if you see any you know deficiency type of thing like the plant struggling a little bit, uh, foliar spray to it will help it to uh, establish itself. Because as it's transplanted, it can take up those nutrients immediately through the foliar spray, and it doesn't have to have its roots set out. So if you notice anything, you know, it's not doing it as hot, give it a little foliar spray, they'll come back, And but getting that soil to really take over and get into the ground is a great idea as well. So that's on, you know, after your transplant. But your whole method you use sounds great and um, awesome. So, and then Jordan here is, I got a question. Excuse me, got a question. Um, is asking, um, I made lactic acid bacteria uh, serum, which is KNF protectors, not too long ago for the fifth time in a couple of years. Cool. And this time in a glass jar, the lacto cultured on the top and made a thin barrier between the serum. Is that normal? Um, so, yes, I mean, it. it Maybe you can clarify this a little bit more, but I just want to show you this over here that um, when I do the um, the protectors here, um, what I end up with is something that looks like this, where um, the curds float to the top and create a layer. So if you're saying it was like a really thin layer and the down, down below was still kind of milky, it could turn to yogurt. I'm not exactly sure, but um, put a glass jar in it should, you know, it should culture on top and make a thin barrier between the serum. So this is kind of what I'm talking about here, that the lactobacillus rises up into this and um, it's there. So, um, so if you have this recipe book, um, you can find it can't have support, but um, you know, has, has this here. Um, so yeah, talking about the curds. Yeah. So I don't know. That's, that's what I was looking at here. I, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, Jordan, but, um, this is what it's supposed to look like. If you have, you know, other things where, for instance, sometimes I'll have it and it doesn't fully separate like that. I'm gonna get the curds to come up. It's more like yogurts in there. Still a lot of lactobacillus in it, but um, there's also other things like, um, you know, more yogurty, like acidophilus type of things, um, other things in there. Um, so, yeah. Um, and JK is asking, do you use anything as a bloom booster? Maybe a fermented fruit juice? I really looking to really push production on my tomatoes. If you are truly talking about tomatoes, um, and you the whole key, so just just one thing, um, I always talk about it as if you try to push um push production on things, um it's more natural farming actually eases tension and provides the nutrients for things to naturally express themselves. So if you're trying to say, I want my tomatoes as healthy as possible to come out as beautiful as they can, then that's, that's one thing other than trying to push it because anytime you try to push things, you're making it out of balance and natural farming, the whole thing is to return to balance. So what I got here on the right is in my recipe book and it is a table that explains how to go through the natural production here. So if you are doing tomatoes, you start with soil solution here, and then you do a seed soak, then it, then, you know, soak your seeds, then you sow your seeds, right? And immediately the plant goes into a chubby phase trying to put out leaves. So it needs a leaf solution. Then as that plant stretches, it'll go into a skinny phase and that's when it needs your fruit formula. So of these formulas, they're, they're listed they're, they're listed, excuse me, right up here. So these are the seven prescriptions of the, how to mix the nine solutions. So you have the soil, seed, leaf, bloom, fruit, harvest, all these. So, um, and you can think of the leaf as a chubby solution and the fruit as a skinny solution, even though 
maybe you think fruits are not skinny, but that's it, that's the plant is exuding. It's taking the energy from and putting it out. And that's why it's getting skinny. So when it's fruiting, it actually is a skinny behavior, believe it or not. Um, that's why the nutrient cycle is confusing. I could go with Master Cho's type 2, type 3, type, you know, uh, there's not even a type 3. Um, but, or, yeah, anyway, um, it gets super confusing on the verbiage. But if you understand that basically you're going through this phase here, that as you're trying to get your tomatoes and you're more in the fruiting phase of it, you're going to go through a bloom phase. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Rainbow Possum Farm. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. The super chats are awesome. They get good reactions and, you know, immediate response, right? Yeah, super chats. And I like that flying potato thing. Maybe it's an avocado. I don't know. Um, oh, no, it's a potato. It has two hands. That's awesome. It's a potato ninja. Um, but basically, you're going through these phases where you're, you're in childhood, and over here, you're, you're, both your leaf and fruit solution should may, be made from plant tips, right? Over here, See, it says over here, childhood, first one third of its life, growth tips, plant tips. As it's a teenager, your food that's in this formula comes from flowers, unripe fruits. Both those are high in um, phosphorus, I think. Yeah, phosphorus. And then after over here, once it gets ripe, your foods, your leaf and fruit should be made from fruits, ripe fruits, the last one third of its life. And these have a lot of potassium in them. So you're getting your NPK balance through here, nitrogen, potassium, or nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and get into this phase, but you're still alternating between the chubby and skinny, right? But you change the food that's in these formulas. And this is how, oh, it's a flying pear. Okay. You know, you never know what, what fruit it is. Looks like a potato to me, but hey. Um, so here are your, your changes, right? And then into your harvest formula. So right before you harvest, you give it this other formula, which has just food minus out the vinegars, um, you know, the harvest formula, if we look at it, it just has food, medicine, minerals, and reproduction, right? And these are in higher concentrations. Uh, actually, the re reproduction is still the same, but um, but it enables it to take up more minerals, right? Harvest formula here. So this is the general thing of how it goes through. Chubby, skinny, chubby, skinny. If you can follow this to the T, you can get amazing production. Um, but not always easy, you know, maintenance formula is always something you can fall back on, but understanding the chubby skinny balance between all these, um, yeah, you're, you're just, just like life. You go through these natural phases and this is how to apply it to ease the stress on your tomatoes so that they will express themselves to be the biggest, most luscious, juiciest, amazing tomatoes you've ever had. And if you're using that for a euphemism for flowers you can't mention on Facebook, there's a there's a slightly different um, solutions of what you want to do. So, um, but the goof man, oh hey yeah, thank you Stone Man, Stone Mason, you are awesome man. I really appreciate everybody who helps out, supports this show. It's epic. It's great. You guys are great. And there's like a microbe hugging a lemon. Is that a lemon? I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Looks like a microbe hugging a lemon to me. That is cool. <laughs> and that flying pear is going to fly straight into a bunch of sugar and ferment itself, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, and Jordan here is clarifying his uh, lacto here. Um, of, let's see here. I'm talking about finished product. It is a glass storage container. It produces a thin layer on the top of bacteria growing on top, it makes wrinkles on top. Oh, okay. So yeah, so let's go back over here to that recipe. So he is talking about um, over here in the storage phase after he's poured things off. And what I recommend is going from step two to step three, that you pour it through a fine cloth, like a t-shirt, something that's very fine woven, not like cheesecloth that's like porous, but like a t-shirt, like something like this, pour it through that. It'll take a while to go through, but that'll help to skim off any residual curds. And what happened is maybe when you were squeezing this out, you squeeze some of the, um, 
the curd and it just micronized and then now it's re-solidifying and coming up. So you can skim that off. If you leave it on there, it can, um, can rot and get molds and things on it. So it's best to try to skim that off and or filter it through a really fine filter. And of course, on this picture here, these are then stirred together. So this sugar and this whey are stirred together. I just left them like this so you could see that it was equal parts of sugar to whey, but these are stirred in really well. So if you do all that, um, it should should work out that that stuff shouldn't accumulate there. But um, So ho hopefully that helps you. And... Um, Yeah, and he in Stonemason saying he always fil uh, always filter it twice, or he gets goop on top. So it's you know it's worth it because it'll kind of settle out a little bit, and you filter it again. It's yeah, you know it's it's hard, especially if you're squeezing your curds. Um, usually, I leave my curds really intact and try not you know I leave a little extra, feed that to the animals. They love it too. So I got two more questions here, and then I'm gonna wrap it up for today. Um, let's see. So. Brandon here is asking, um, what are you using to spray with as in a pump? I want to get a spray rig set up. Um, what I end up, you know, uh, recently I, between my tractor and the other sprayer, I do have, um, um, one of these, um, here, um, it's, this is one of the sprayers I use. Um, although I, I really, I haven't been using this lately, but, um, but when I do on a large area and I want to get out and do it, um, and it, and this has gone up in price too. And I bought mine for like 500 bucks. It's now 779. So if you're going to buy it, buy it now, you know, avoid inflation in that. Um, but what it looks like is like this here where you got a little sprayer and you can mount this sprayer and this looks like this guy has it on a 55 gallon drum here and it's a little weed whacker engine that runs this little pump and this pump can drive some some um you know to get up into trees and things and then these these cords here this is your your intake and this is your return so um, so it runs that way and it's a little unit here that comes with this spray gun this spray hose and this um and I should really should get a, um, you know, sponsorship from Mariyama and be able to hook you guys up with some deals on this stuff because I always recommend this thing. Um, but it comes with, yeah, 65 foot hose. Um, and this little thing runs pretty darn well. And this is what I use if I'm going to spray. Um, but, um, but I also have like a, um, you know, a gear more, let me see, gear more sprayer you know and i i do um run something i don't know like you know i would if i if, if i really had a choice i would go get something like this um get a venturi sprayer oh, i don't even know where these things are sprayers venturi you know if i really yeah if i really had to go out it again i'd probably get something like this um, didn't really get bigger, um, but a Venturi that shoots out both sides and sprays, you know, um, what I, when I end up with is a sprayer, um, something like this is what we have here on the farm. So something like this, where it runs off the PTO and you could run a boom off it, but we end up having a hand sprayer so we can spray it where we want. Are nebulizers good for spraying? Yes. Um, and atomizers, those things that spray. Um, it all depends on where you're at and what you're doing. Um, you know, best thing to spray is something that makes it easy where you can get the correct amount out. Um, and too fine a mist, they're okay. If you're just spraying maintenance solution, it's good. If you're trying to spread microbes, it's a little bit harder. Um, yeah, and uh, Massey 35, awesome. That's similar to what I have. I have a 35 horsepower um, New Holland. Um, so the PTO, I would definitely recommend a P something off a of PTO if you have that equipment, because otherwise, you know, it's just another thing to maintain. Just keep your tractor running, do it off the diesel. Um, but getting the right boom so you can get it out there. Um, you know, a Venturi sprayer, all the more better, right? You can get it sucked out there and not have to worry about um, the things being ground up in a pump. 
So Venturi's are great if you can afford them. Um, okay, and then... Um, yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, well, I think that ends up... Oh, so what herbs or plants to use for Jadam Herbal Solution? Uh, around here, I don't really use the Jadam Herbal Solution a lot, but if I was to do it... Um, Let's see, what is the plant? I can't think. Oh, just like a mind blank here. Um, let's see, this one is um, not uh, Wadilia. This right here. If I was to make an herbal solution around myself, around here, I would definitely use this plant. Um, Wadilia. Um, it says that it's spaghetti cotola tri trilobata. Sphagneticola. But I did mean Wedelia. It's spelled this way, Wedelia. It's a plant. Um, scientific name, Wedelia. Amazing. Um, but um, this thing grows around me. It's really easy to get. You've probably seen it if you're in a tropical area. It grows great. If you're not in a tropical area... I don't know if it grows around. Um, here's the Wikipedia on it. It says it's of the family Asteraceae. Um, and yeah, this thing has a whole bunch of species apparently, but it no, no bugs eat it. It's amazing. It's um, It does great. Is it toxic? Let's see. What do they say? Um, it's generally considered non-toxic. Um, it's not an edible plant and should not be eating by pets, pets, livestock, or children. So yeah, so this would be a great candidate for, um, using as an herbal solution. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Narrow gauge Venturi gear. Yeah. See if you can pick one up, a used one from those guys and, uh, get, get a good sprayer out there. But, uh, it depends, depends on your technology. Again, if you're doing small scale stuff, small scale, something like this works really well. Um, I've also had, um, some other folks around me use like, um, still sprayer, um, like these type of things. I've had folks around me, oh shoot, you're not on the right page. Okay, I've had folks around me use something like these type of things, these backpack sprayers where you load the solutions in the top and it uses this blower nozzle to blow the stuff out. Um, and I've had people use this with great success. Um, to me, it's 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 too noisy. It's like running the leaf blower on your back. I'm not that into it. Plus you're carrying the weight. I'd rather use the Maruyama type of thing, but um, but anyway, I've had people use these with great success around here. Um, and yeah, so, well, there's Ace Hardware. Um, so anyway, I want to thank you guys. Um, thank you, Stone Mason. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Rainbow Possum Farm. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for everybody who threw down Super Chats. Thank you, guys. If you didn't Super Chat, thanks for being here and appreciate it. It's always good. Share the can if love where you are. Thanks to Julia sending in some videos. Thanks everybody who sent in questions. Hope I answered those sufficiently. Somebody's calling me. I'm not going to answer it. It's my auntie. She does natural farming in California. It's great. Um, but wanted to mention to you as always that this show is brought to you hugely in part by the KNF Foundation. So that's purekf.org on the internet doing great things. Um, and they host this office hours happening, KNF Times, all these things. So if you want to check out more things and get into KNF, um, find that stuff up. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May peace and love prevail this week. May we bring in more goodness and growing the right direction. Love each other. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I'm pretty sure I will see you next week. Um, pretty sure. I got a, I got another wedding to go to. It seems like it's wedding season, but almost certain I'll be here. Uh, I got to double check that. But um, if not, I'll catch you soon. Thank you. Long live the natural farmer. Aloha. Bye now.